what we're going to be looking at here is treasury stock and we're going to be comparing the cost method here versus the par value method here for acquiring and reissuing treasury stock and really the best way is just to go through an example here and look at each of these here and we're going to start out with our treasury stock the cost method here so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to set up uh, these treasury stock account and also additional paid in uh, capital account here for our treasury stock and just to point out here this is a contra equity account here now what it does here is what we mean by a contra equity account here you just look at your debits and your credits here in your treasury stock account versus your equity account here your common stock account here so for uh, your treasury stock account your debit or is going to be a plus amount here and for your common stock account here a debit is going to be a minus account here and same for our credits here in a treasury stock versus our common stock here credit minus in our treasury stock credit plus here in our common stock now when we're using this cost method here in the common stock its value really doesn't come into play here either it's par value or any excess over par all we do with the cost method here is we deal with the cost or uh, for it, uh, acquiring our shares here and that's what we're deal with, dealing with here now let's just go through an example say for example we acquired 200 shares at forty dollars per share so that would be eight thousand dollars that would be have to be spent on that so there's no gain or loss when acquiring treasury stock here so what we would do is we would have debited as a treasury stock account here now remember this is an equity account here on our balance sheet here debited for eight thousand dollars here and our cash account we would have credited that or reduced it here for eight thousand dollars okay no gain or loss here when acquiring treasury stock but this is the we when we reissue our treasury stock then this is where we're going to have some gains or losses so let's just look at the example here we have 100 shares here at 46 dollars per share we reissued it here so we would have uh, debited our cash account here for 4600 dollars now this is where this cost comes into effect now remember it cost us here forty dollars per share to acquire this stock here so when we reissue it here we're going to use that forty dollar cost here in our treasury stock here for the reissue cost here so what we would do here uh, we reissued a hundred a hundred shares here at the forty dollar cost so we'd credit or reduce our treasury stock here by four thousand dollars now the balancing amount here goes into additional paid in capital here to our treasury stock so so this is the case here we're going to the uh, credit we're going to have to credit that for six hundred dollars here because we had a uh, credit amount here of four thousand in our treasury stock account and we received a forty six hundred dollars a debit amount here of forty six hundred dollars so we have a difference here of uh, for uh, six hundred dollars and this is going to be a gain and we're going to credit our treasury stock account here for that six hundred dollar gain because we received forty six hundred and our cost was only four thousand dollars so with this cost method here you maintain your treasury stock account here at the cost or the acquired cost here of that stock and then any um, when you issue it here any uh, amounts uh, either under or over go into the additional paid in capital account here so we looked at the first case here where we um, issued that first hundred shares here now let's go and let's issue the next hundred shares here and let's just say our issue cost what we written issue price what we received here is twenty four dollars a share so we debit our cash account here for $2,400 and then we move over to this treasury stock account here and this is the case here where we would credit or reduce our treasury stock account here by um, in this case it's going to be 100 shares here times that forty dollars per share cost or credit it here for reduce it here by four thousand dollars again based off that cost here now what we would do is we need a balancing entry here so we only receive twenty four hundred dollars in cash and we have a creditor reduce their treasury stock here by four thousand so, uh, dollars in our credit amount here so we're going to need a debit balance here that's going to go to additional paid in capital for our treasury stock so what we would do is we would in this case we would debit it for six hundred dollars well why do we do that here because we only have six hundred sitting in here dollars from that gain that we uh, had previously here in that first issue here now we can we have to debit it out here additional paid in capital only for the amount that's sitting here so we would debit it for six hundred dollars and that's only to get our balance 
uh, between our cash account here and our treasury stock the difference here so debit that for what's sitting here at six hundred dollars in our account and then that brings it to a zero balance and then the remaining amount here flows into retained earnings so we would debit or reduce our retained earnings for one thousand dollars so here we had we received twenty four hundred in cash here but because we uh, had to record here our treasury stock at the um, cash amount here this forty dollars per share we recorded it here at four thousand dollars so we had to account for that sixteen hundred dollar loss in this case so it flowed into our retained earnings here debit that here for the difference uh, between the uh, uh, six hundred dollars that a debit amount here and um, and that $1,600 loss gives us a retained earnings here of $1,000. So you can see here when you're working with this treasury cost method here, um, tr or the treasury cost method here for this treasury stock, you're dealing with the um, cost that you actually, uh, ac for acquiring your stock here. So that's what you have to work here with. And then any cash receipts um, are balanced against the cost on a per share basis here, based on the cost of the share. And those flow into your additional paid in capital here. And you can only reduce your additional paid in capital uh, to the amount that's sitting here in the balance here. So on a loss here, you're going to debit your additional paid in capital. And if you have a zero balance, then uh, any any further loss goes into your flows into your retained earnings. So that takes care of for our treasury cost method. Now let's move over here and look at the treasury stock par value method here. And this is where we don't have to go through all the numbers here, but we can we can look at them, and it's really easy to look at them th uh, through different steps that we're like A through F here. I've got outlined here. So let's first look at the difference here. Now, when you're dealing with this uh, stock, uh, treasury stock par value method here, this is where the common stock and the additional paid in capital here for the common stock come into play. Remember, for the cost method, we didn't involve ourselves here with our common stock and our additional paid in capital for a common stock. But with the par value method, you do here. So first thing, let's look at this common stock. Uh, let's just say here, on a, and that's our basis here, our shareholders equity, our basis here. So we're going to have, in this case, let's say our common stock we issued a thousand shares here at a five dollar par value at the um, issue price here was thirty dollars per share that we received here so what we would do here again our par amount here five dollars per share a thousand shares we'd credit that here for five thousand dollars now the difference would flows into additional paid in capital so we had the thirty dollar issue price here less the five dollar par so twenty five dollars per share goes into additional paid in capital here so we would uh, with a thousand shares times twenty five dollars so we have a credit amount here of twenty five thousand dollars in our additional paid in capital now this is where this charge uh, we use this par value here the per share par value here for our treasury stock transactions here and we also have this additional paid in capital for our treasury stock but let's just go through our numbers here and just look at how they fall out here so let's say for example here we're going to acquire 200 shares at $26 per share here so what we would do here on that's on our 2-1 date here so that amount would we credit or reduce our cash here for $5,200 here okay all right so that's that is based on the uh, price that it costs us here uh, to acquire those shares that was the same as with the uh, uh, cost method here whatever the price is you have to pay it here now this is where the difference comes in now with the par value method here we would debit or increase our treasury stock here well let's look at two one by the one we acquired in this case 100 share what we acquired 200 shares here at the five dollar par value this comes off this is where the co a common stock comes into play here we use the par value here of our common stock to record the uh, par amount here of our treasury stock so in this case we had 200 shares at five dollar par amount so we debit our treasury stock here for one thousand dollars now again additional paid in capital uh, this is this is really a balancing account but it's a balancing account not only between our treasury stock cost account our cash account and also additional paid in capital here to our common stock okay so what we would do here uh, 
proceeding on here with this 2-1 date here, we would have reduced our additional paid in capital here to our common stock by $5,000. That was the 200 shares that we acquired here, and that was the $25 per share price here that was sitting for our common stock here. So we would have debited that here for $5,000. Now, we have a debit amount here in our treasury stock here for $1,000, and we also have uh, a debit here, or a credit here for our cash payment of $5,200. So what we have to do is we, this is where our balancing entry comes in. So our treasury stock here, we won't go through all that again here, but we have $1,000 sitting here, additional paid in capital here, um, over here of 5000 and then the cash payment that we made here was $5,200. So we have to compare those amounts here. We have 6000 here less the $5,200 here, so we have a gain here of $800. So again, this is where we would credit our additional paid in capital here of treasury stock for $800. Similar to the cost method here, gains would uh, go as a, a credit minus here to your additional paid in capital because it's a contra cap and losses, you debit it here for the loss here. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, just remember here, between the with the cost method, all we worried about is the cost of our treasury stock here. But with the a par value method, we have to take the par value off our common stock, and it is used here to record the par value on our treasury stock. And we also use this additional paid in capital here. We reduce that here in our common stock for those issue costs here. So you can see the difference here with the. Um, cost method we didn't involve ourselves with our common stock account we just worried about here the treasury stock uh, cost itself now let's just move on here and we'll just look at the case here where our next transaction here where we had uh, acquired 300 shares at forty dollars per share here so we would have at three one here we would have credited or reduced our cash account here for twelve thousand dollars now on three one I, this is where we again we use that par value here we take the five dollar par amount here that owns those three hundred shares acquired so we would debit our treasury stock here for fifteen hundred dollars and then over on our additional paid in capital under our uh, common stock account here for a common stock here we would have debited that here for 7500 simply to 300 shares acquired times that $25 per share okay so this is where um, again this additional paid in capital here treasury stock becomes a balancing entry here between their treasury stock or additional paid in capital or common stock and our cash account and what we would do here, and not going through all those numbers here, but let's just look at what would happen in this case here. So our treasury stock, we would have recorded that here at $1,500. Additional paid in capital or common stock here, we would have had debited that here for $7,500. And uh, then our cash account, we would have credited that here for $12,000. So what we're doing here is we're just com making the comparison here and looking at our balance here. So um, uh, we'd have uh, 1500 plus 75, 9000 less the cash payment that we made here of 12000 So we're going to have a loss in this case of $3,000. Now, this is very similar to the cost method here. We have to allocate this loss. So we take what's sitting in our additional paid in capital. In this case, it was $800. So we would reduce our additional paid in capital here by $800. So bring it down to a zero balance. Same as for the cost method here. But we have to we have to account for the total loss here of three thousand dollars. So we have accounted for uh, eight hundred dollars here in additional paid in capital to treasury stock, I guess. And so the difference between the three thousand and the eight hundred gives us twenty two hundred dollars worth of loss that we have to account for and this is going to flow into retained earnings same as the cost method here we reduced our retained earnings here by twenty two hundred dollars simply the difference between the total loss that we'd have here and the uh, what we uh, debited to the additional paid in capital here for eight hundred dollars so in this case the loss you debit the additional paid in capital here and if it has a zero balance then you debit the remainder here to earnings same as with the cost method it's only how we got to this point here to determine additional paid in capital now just to now one other thing here let's just say uh, when we reissue our shares here what we would do is we just simply take in this case we reissued say a hundred shares here at forty six dollars per share so we would have debited or increased our cash here by forty six hundred dollars and then 
uh, for our treasury stock, well, we have to take the par value again here. We reissued 100 shares at a $5 par, so we'd credit or reduce our treasury stock here by $500. And then the difference really goes into additional paid in capital here on that for that reissued. Cash received the 4,600 um, debit amount here, less our credit here to treasury stock, reducing our treasury stock at its par of amount here, 500, gives us a uh, credit uh, bal uh, balancing amount here of $4,100. Uh, credit or reduce our additional paid in capital here by $4,100. So you can see 500 here to credit, 41 here as a credit balances with our debit here of $4,600. Okay, so we've looked at both the cost method here and the par value method. Now just remember with the par value method you have to uh, be concerned here with your common stock, it's par value, and the excess here over the par value, you reduce it here for those issue. At those issue uh, the issuing of stock here, and uh, then the balance goes into the additional paid in capital at treasury stock to determine any gain or loss between your cash account up here, your treasury stock account here, and your additional paid in capital. Now with the cost method, remember we just worried about the cost of our treasury stock here, and then we were able to determine any gain or loss based on our cost here, and we use that whatever your cost of your stock was versus the cash you either received or paid that gave you a the difference went into your additional paid in capital to determine any gain or loss but then whatever was in both cases here uh, we could only reduce our additional paid in capital here um, a credit amount here again uh, we would debit our loss amount here only to the amount that's sitting in our additional paid in capital and then the remaining balance remember uh, for that loss had to go into the retained earnings here same as with the cost method but it's just a matter of how we got to this additional paid in capital here to determine any gains or losses all right so that takes care of comparing the cost method here with the par ma value method here for acquiring and reissuing treasury stock.